This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning and welcome to American Reform Church. My name is Brittany Janiszewski. I'm the worship leader here. And I just want to say a big welcome to all of you. Um, whether you've been going here for 50 years or whether this is your first Sunday, we're so glad that you decided to get up this morning and come and worship the Lord with us. Um, as you might see around some visitors this week, we had VBS, and our kids are going to be singing some of their VBS songs. So for those of you who have been going here a long time, pay attention to those around you, see if you see somebody new, and make sure to introduce yourself and say a big welcome. So right now, if you'd like to just stand up, take a moment to greet those around you as we begin our worship this morning. Jesus. 
all pray with me? God, we come to you here today to worship. May we listen carefully, pray honestly, and sing joyfully. Send us your Holy Spirit so that our words and our actions will bring you glory. Thank you that Jesus is our rescuer who came to earth to make us part of your family. Help us to remember as we worship you that we are part of your family. We join with everyone who loves you here, around the world, and throughout all of history. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. Well, this past week we did VBS, and it was such a great time. And uh, with this being my first VBS here at this church, uh, I, haven't, I hadn't done VBS in years. It had probably been at least 15 years since I was uh, helping at VBS. But this Friday, a few days ago, we had this place packed with kids and moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas just celebrating just everything that God had done this past week. And I cannot tell you how important this ministry really, really is. Uh, in different classes and different times where I would get to connect with kids, just finding out really how hurting some of these kids are, how broken some of these kids are, but most importantly, how desperately these kids need to know that there's hope. They need to know that Jesus rescues. And that was, that was the theme of the of, of of this year's VBS, that Jesus rescues. And I thought how great it was for these kid, kids, whether they'd be going through mom and dad is sick or maybe a divorce or someone had passed away, to know that Jesus rescues. And so it was such a great time. So at this point, uh, we're going to have the VBS kids and the leaders, they're going to do some special songs for us. Good morning. So while they're all getting set here, um, I just wanted to share a few totals with you um, from the week. Um, on average, we had around 220, 25 kids um, each day. So that was really wonderful to see this place packed full of all these kids just wanting to learn about Jesus and what he does and how he rescues us. Um, we collected offering this week, and what we did with that is we split it in half. Half of it went to... Haiti to give um, seed packets to the um, families down there. So we ended up raising enough to get 46 kids food for a year. So we were really excited about that. And then the other half stayed here in town to help with the renovations of the parks here in town. They started um, working on Spencer Park last year, and they're going to continue to do a little bit more with all the parks. So we ended up raising $918.18. So that was uh, really exciting um, for that also. We had uh, 25 outgoing sixth graders this year that we were able to present Bibles to. So that was um, really wonderful to see all of them that are still willing to come back each year and they're excited to come help next year. So uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and we got four songs we're going to sing for you because it was pretty much the four songs that the kids loved the most.
Picture slowly fade away, and when the tears are pain.
my wrestling, in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My Mason Kellner. Is that you? All right. You get to pick one of them. You can take them home after the service, okay? So you can just pick one. I'm not sh we'll just let you guys pick which ones you're going to get, okay? Caleb Weirs. All right, three more. Logan. <laughs> I know you parents are going to be really excited to have them home with you, aren't you? <laughs> Addie Arnett. Mason Smith. <laughs> okay, one more, guys. Robbie Peterson. All right. One more round of applause for these guys. They did a great job this week. All right, you guys can go ahead and have a seat with your parents, okay? All right, they're going to come back to you guys now.
All right. That last song that they did, My Lighthouse, uh, true story. Uh, the first day they did it, uh, my eyes started well, welling up just with, to the, almost the point of tears. And every single day we did it, my eyes would just, I'd, I'd almost cry. I, probably kids were looking at me, what's wrong with our leader? <laughs> so, um, and I think it was just me seeing over 200 kids just worshiping the truth of who Jesus Christ is. So VBS to me is such an important, vital part of our kids' ministry. And so Friday we announced that uh, uh, Teresa and Tammy that have been helped leading it for years are kind of retiring. Uh, and so uh, we are in the need of seeing if some people, if we can start building a team for this next year. If you are interested in helping out or even in maybe leading, uh, uh, the, the, the past team said that they would definitely be there to help mentor you and, 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 and help out in any way they can. You wouldn't be out there kind of just needing to figure this out. But we are already starting to begin to plan for 2019. So if that's you, if you're interested in helping out, you can either come talk to me or you can talk to Pastor Troy. You can call up our church office and we can start beginning the, that planning for that. And so in a couple months, we'll really start looking at planning uh, 2019 VBS. And so um, if we can get ready for our, our offering this morning, we're, this offering is going to our general fund. And uh, if you're here, whether you've been here forever or this is your first time here, in front of you, you'll see a little black book. If you could fill that out, let us know that you're here. We, we, we love to know that you're here. And so, it does, again, it doesn't matter how long you've been here. We just love to know who's here and who's not so we can care appropriately. Um, but as we're giving uh, in this Sunday morning, I wanted to read something to you. And it's in Psalms 89.11. It says this, The heavens are yours, the earth also is yours. The world and all it contains, you have founded them. Guys, I want to challenge us to begin to think a little bit differently about the things that we have. There's such a huge biblical truth here, and it's pointing out that everything in this world belongs to God. I think sometimes why we have such a problem with our finances is because we look at it as it's ours, it's my money, I work for it, it's mine. The problem is, is when you begin to look at things that you have as yours, it changes the way you approach giving. This scripture tells us that everything that this world has isn't ours, but it's God, and God asks us to manage it. So the car you have isn't your car. The house you have isn't your house. The job you have isn't your job. It's God, and God asks us to be good stewards. And so when I look at the money that I have in my account, I have to realize that that money wouldn't be there unless God allowed it to be there. And so today as we give, let us be challenged to give because God is asking us to be good stewards. And today as, as the offering is being passed around, uh, I'm going to invite all the kids to come up so we can get ready for that. Uh, but let's pray. God, we come before you. I thank you so much. God, I thank you for just all the resources you have given us. God, you ask us to be good stewards over those things. That everything we have, it was yours first and doesn't belong to us, but you ask us to freely give. And so I ask, God, that today we would give. We would give not only because you ask us to, but we would give because there's people that are hurting that need to know the good news of Jesus Christ. And it helps us further your mission of seeing this region saved. God, we thank you so much and just ask right now your will be done in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. Amen. If the kids want to come up and get ready for the mystery box, you guys can all come up and find a spot down here.
Good morning, everybody. Are you guys excited to be here? Yeah. You excited to find out what's in the box? Yeah. Eddie, you're not. You're like shaking your head. He's like, no. But you guys who are, I have a, I have a question. How many know who this guy is? Who can tell me his name? What's his name? Pastor. This is Pastor Rob. So Pastor Rob, yes, you're right. Jen. It's, it's your dad. It's also your dad. Absolutely right. He claims you. That's good. Yeah, that's good. So some of you may not have met Pastor Rob. Pastor Rob just started working here a couple of months ago, and he was so excited. He's like, I cannot wait to do the mystery box. So we're going to let him do this today. And our friend Reed took the box home last week, and you want to help show Pastor Rob what's in the box, Reed? Go, go ahead and open it up. Let's see what we have for Pastor Rob. Oh, my goodness. All right, so <laughs> all right. I'll go ahead and sit down now. I, if I'm being truthful, I was super excited to do this, but the part that would scare me was what is going to be inside because I've heard there was, has been live animals in here. And you guys would hear me, you guys would hear me scream like a little girl. <laughs> I promise you. <laughs> so, okay, I think we're good. We're, we're good. All right. So tell me what this is. A long neck? Okay, that's cool. All right, and what do we got here? A T-Rex. Do you know his name? Yes, what movie is he from? Toy Story, awesome. And then is, what is this? It's your blue blanket? Oh, my son, when he grew up, he had a blue blanket. So just, almost just like this. So, we got two dinosaurs and we got a blue blanket. Let's talk about these things, all right? Let's talk about these. Okay, dinosaurs, all right? How old, how long ago did some of these things live, is what they say? How long ago? Long time ago? Long time ago? What about before mom and dad were alive? Do you think mom and dad, were there dinosaurs around when mom and dad were alive? Yeah, yeah my son is saying yes. <laughs> My son, my kids always ask me, what was life like in the black and white days? <laughs> Not that old. <laughs> awesome. Okay, well, think about this. Think of how old you think dinosaurs are, all right? Now think about this. God is even older than that. Think about that. Like, how old? Like, dinosaurs don't even exist. If you go to museums, there's no dinosaurs around. But even how old they are, God is even older than that. And here's what's crazy. When I think about God, God has always, always been alive. Like God was never, ever created. God was never born. God has always existed all the time. From the very, very beginning of time, God was there. And even before that, God was there. Now think about this, that, God, that the Bible says this, that Way, way long time ago, before everything was created, God knew who you were, that God had a plan for your life. Isn't that awesome to know that long, long time ago, before you were born, before mom and dad was born, God had a plan for your life. So the plan for your life is way, way older than even you, older than these dinosaurs. That's how much God loves you, that he cares so much about you that when he was creating the heavens and the earth and everything, he said, you know what? What's your name? Mason. Mason. That God said, all right, angels, hold up. Let's work on creating Mason. Here's going to be Mason's parents. Here's going to be his color of eyes, what his hair is going to look like, where he's going to be born, that the plan for your life is even older than these dinosaurs. How cool is that? So who is thankful that God has a plan for us? Amen? All right. Let's pray real quick, okay? God, I thank you that, God, that you have a plan for our lives. That long, long time ago that you set up a plan for our lives. And, God, you ask us to find out what that plan is. God, I pray that you would be with us, that today even that you would help us to understand what that plan is and how we can live that plan. God, we thank you so much for our moms and dads. And for everything that happened this past week at VBS, just be with us and we thank you. Amen. 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 How was that for my first one? Was that all right? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, guys.
And so I think we have to give this away to someone who has never, ever done this. Preferably a girl. Preferably, but the thing is, is you have to, are you going to be here next week? You're going to be here? Okay, I'm going to give it to you, okay? And uh, is Pastor Troy or maybe Brittany, someone else other than me is going to do it, so make sure it's really, really hard. All right, make sure it's just impossible. Now they won't have any clue that they're just up here and they don't know what to say. All right? All right. You guys can go back to your seats. So I have a couple of announcements before we spend a few minutes in prayer. So you did see a few uh, updates on some of our church members and people from our community in the bulletin today. Don Molinar, he's going to be having hip replacement this coming Thursday. Jeff Meehan is still at University of Chicago Hospital uh, receiving some treatments there. So please keep him and Mary Ann and their family in your prayers. Uh, also remember that uh, Bud Mush, he did uh, suffer a fall and he broke a hip. So he had surgery on that, but he's now back at Symphony in Crown Point receiving a rehab there. That is where he, he does stay there, but he's in a different room right now getting rehab there. And you'll see a few other updates there in the bulletin as well. Just want to make sure that you are aware of, so you can be keeping them all in your prayers as well. So as you just join me in a few minutes of prayer. God, we just thank you for today, God, for the opportunity to be here and to worship God. And God, we do remember, God, these Folks who we see in our bulletin, God, who are in need of special prayers, God, who are in need of healing, who are in need of just a sense of peace and of your presence with them, then, with them, God, we just pray that you would just be near them, that you would watch over them, that you would strengthen them, God, that you would use the doctors and nurses who care for them just to provide care and strength for them, Lord. We give you thanks for Vacation Bible School, Lord, for all the children who came here to hear about how you rescue and how you set us free, God, and how you love us so much, Lord. And we pray, God, as we hear from your word today, that we would just be reminded of how great you are, God, that because you came, that because you lived, because you died, God, we have life, we have hope, we have joy, and we have peace, God. God, and this is all for your honor and your glory. And let's pray also in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. I want to invite the praise team to come and get set. We're going to sing our song in preparation, which is Jesus Messiah, and invite you to stand to sing. Let's stand together. So as we sing this song, this week at VBS, we talked about how Jesus rescues us. And in our sermon, we're going to hear uh, how Jesus is our hope. And so as you sing this song, think about the words that you're saying. Not only are we thanking and worshiping Jesus for being our hope, we're also declaring with our voices to ourselves and to one another that we believe that Jesus is our Messiah who came to the world to save us. So please lift up your voices and sing with us. Okay. 
Amen. I just want to ask you to open your Bibles to the book of 1 Peter, uh, chapter 1. And you can find that on page 1,886 in your pew Bibles. And we're going to be spending some time here over the summer months, over the next number of weeks, kind of looking at the book of 1 Peter kind of in its entirety. We're calling this series Summer Book Club. Because one of the things that I know I enjoy doing in the summer, and many of you maybe enjoy doing as well, is spending some time over the summer just reading a good book. Maybe it's a novel, maybe it's a biography, maybe it's a different type of book, but we just enjoy kind of having some freedom time. Maybe you're sitting on a beach, maybe you're sitting out in your yard, but it's enjoying some time reading a good book. So we want to spend some time studying the book of First Peter uh, this summer, over the next number of weeks. But there's a few things I want you to know about this book before you read chapter 1 today. So the first thing is, because it's a letter, we should want to know, well, who wrote it? Who did they write it to? When was it written? So this book was written by Peter. At the very least, Peter gave the information. He may not have physically written it, but we know that this material came from Peter, who was one of Jesus' apostles. And it was written to believers who lived in what is now modern-day Turkey. You're going to see some places there, and to be listed here in the first couple of verses. All those places are in what is now the nation of Turkey. So kind of picture kind of West Asia, kind of around there. And it was written around 60 to 64 AD. So picture about 30 years after Jesus, this letter was written. So there's enough people yet who were eyewitnesses to who Jesus was and what he did, what he was all about, that they were still going to be carrying on these stories. And the impact of that is now being felt. And it's also important to note that at this time, the Roman Empire is in control. So the Romans are really controlling the entire world. And the emperor at this time is a man named Nero. Now, you may have heard this name before, but one of the things that Nero was known for was his persecution of Christians. There's a bunch of different reports, a bunch of different stories, a bunch of different historians who talk about how Nero treated Christians and the way that he approached trying to deal with the rise of Christianity within the Roman Empire. So the people who were received this letter were people who were in danger for their faith. The fact that they were followers of Jesus and the fact that they were believers put them in danger. So I want you to have that all in your mind as we read this first chapter of the letter of 1 Peter. So follow along with me, if you will, in your Bibles. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's elect, exiles scattered throughout the provinces of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, to be obedient to Jesus Christ and sprinkled with his blood. Grace and peace be yours in abundance. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power till the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold which perishes, though being refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you know him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him, and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of this grace that was to come to you searched intently, and with the greatest care, trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of the Messiah and the glories that would follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves but you. When they spoke of the things they have now been told, they have now been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit, sent from heaven. Even angels long to look into these things. Therefore, with mindset or alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. For just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all that you do. For it is written, 
Be holy because I am holy. Since you call in a father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were deemed to be that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God, who called him from the dead and glorified him, so your faith and hope are in God. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart, you have been born again, not of imperishable, not a perishable seed, but of imperishable, the living and enduring word of God. For all people are like grass, and, the glory, and their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. This is God's word. So we have here kind of this introduction that Peter's trying to make in a letter. So one thing is we have to remember when we're reading a letter, we're going to get the idea of the letter at the beginning. If you would write a letter to somebody, which we don't really do anymore, but if you were to write something to somebody, you would want them to know early on why you were writing. If you write a card, if you write some sort of a note to somebody, you want them to know right away why you are writing. Maybe it's for their birthday, maybe it's for an anniversary, maybe it's for some other situation or circumstance, maybe it's just because. So in this beginning of the letter, we have an idea of why Peter is writing this letter to these believers. And it's because he wants to remind them of the hope that they have. Because these are people who are in need of hope. They were people who, because of where they lived and the time that they lived, and because they were believers in Jesus, and because they were people who claimed to be Christians, there was a certain amount of danger that they felt. And Peter reminds them, in this world, you are going to suffer through different kinds of trials. And what's so cool to me is that when we were planning out this series and kind of laid out the weeks we were going to start, I hadn't really heard everything about what Vacation Bible School was going to be about. I knew the theme was shipwrecked. I knew it was rescued by Jesus. But as we kind of went through the different days, I thought, this really fits what I'm going to talk about on Sunday. So, VBS kids, I need some help. Can you guys help me? This is the part where you say yes. Thank you. So you guys kind of did a call and response thing this week, right? Where Miss Keegan, who was up here helping you with the songs, would say something, and then you would respond with a couple of words. So let's see if you remember how to do this. When I'm lonely, awesome, they remember. When I struggle, great. When I worry, when I am in trouble. And then Friday we talked about when I am powerless. Awesome. Thank you, kids. Because what they learned this week is when they struggle, when they're having a hard time, Jesus rescues. When they're lonely, when they feel left out, when they feel like no one is there, Jesus rescues and is there for them. They're reminded that when they worry, when they're concerned, when they're just scared maybe jesus is there when they get in trouble when they make mistakes when they sin jesus rescues and is there and when they're powerless jesus is there to rescue them now i don't know about you i think we could stand and maybe be reminded of these lessons too couldn't we that when we struggle when we worry when we feel powerless when we're in trouble, when we feel alone and worry, we need to be reminded that Jesus is there and that he rescues. And that's what Peter wants to remind these believers of right away, that Jesus is there to rescue, that he is your hope. And he even goes a little bit further to remind them of how they can know that this hope is true. He points back to the Old Testament. But how do you think you would feel if you heard this message at the time. If you were in trouble, if you were scared, if you were near, and someone came to you and said, hey, you know what? There's hope. There's hope for you. There's a way out. 
there's something more here that you can hold on to and that you can remember. Would you be interested in what they had to say? Would you be encouraged? Would you maybe feel a little less worried or alone? I believe you would. I hope that you would. Because that's what Peter's trying to plant in there, has to remind them to not get so concerned and worried about their circumstance, but to remind them of the hope. And then he points back to the prophets. So the prophets were people who we read about a lot in the Old Testament. In fact, a lot of the books in the Old Testament are what we call prophetic books that are written by prophets to the people of God, the people of Israel and Judah, through different situations in their life. And many of them were talking to them when they too were in trouble, when they too were in danger because they were in captivity to either Assyria or to Babylon. And they were reminding them of the hope that was to come. But they told them two things. They told them, there's hope for you in the current situation. Eventually, you will come back from Assyria. Eventually, you will come back from Babylon. Eventually, Jerusalem's going to be restored. Eventually, all these things you're feeling, experiencing right now are going to end. You're going to get to go back home. But they also pointed ahead to the Messiah who was going to come. So the prophets reminded people, said, don't just look at what's happening right now. We want to tell you about something that's going to happen in the future. Eventually, a Messiah is going to come, and he's going to set you free, not just from Assyria, not just from Babylon, but from everything, from sin, from the problem that lies under all of these things. But what Peter is saying now is that they didn't even fully get what they were talking about. Because they were trying to figure out when this Messiah was going to come. They spent a lot of time trying to figure out when is this Messiah going to come? Where is it going to happen? What's it going to be like? But you, now reading this letter today, you know the answer. You know the answer. You know who that Messiah was. It was Jesus. The guy who was crucified about 30 years ago. The one who you believe in. The one whom you follow. He was that Messiah who came to rescue and to set free. So just like they didn't see all this, you get to see this now. To be reminded that that hope that was kind of being looked forward to then, you now know. And it changes everything because we can look and we can see this hope that we have that has been demonstrated, that has been proven because of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. But then there's something significant that he points to here in the last part of this chapter. There's something that he kind of points to that kind of holds us all together and that it's really what our hope is ultimately in and how we can know that hope. So he points to in a couple of different places that our hope is in Jesus. And the way that we can know that hope is through his word. So it's a reminder that no matter what situation you find yourself in, no matter what chapter of life you're in, there's hope. Because at the end of the story, Jesus will do what he said he would do. At the end of the story, Jesus will be who he said he will be. At the end of your